I wouldn't mind being killed by a snow leopard right now. I wouldn't have to do this. Thunder is very scary when you are very high. Right now it's hailing it down. Very dizzy. I feel like I'm gonna faint. This is an example of what not to do when you are on a high altitude trek. So watch this video. I know I'm going to get so much hate, but it is what it is. Got to stay true to myself on the channel and be honest. You guys will probably find it funny. We've got the highest point to go today. 5,400 or 5,500 meters, something like this. Last night, I felt a little bit dizzy from the altitude. Um, but yeah, I, I'm fine this morning. I wasn't, I didn't feel sick or anything like this, but a bit dizzy. Um, we might get some altitude sickness today. Who knows? But we're going up to the highest point and then we're going down again. So I don't know, we'll find out. Molly's brought me on this bloody Annapurna circuit trek. And I'll be honest, it's the uh, best walk of my life. Most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in all my life. Once a lifetime experience, and it's been amazing. We're on day eight. What what day are we? Eight, yeah. Mrs. Torturer over there. <laughs> so we've climbed. Look at how steep these mountains are around here. Look at how steep that is. We've climbed that for the past half an hour. First bit of today's trek gets even steeper. We've got to climb up that. And I've had enough. What I want to do is sit down and not walk anymore uphill. Mountain. It's not a hill. It's mountain, and it's steep mountain. I've I've been all right. For, I've been all right, haven't I? Up until now. Yeah, not much complaining yet. But I, I'm throwing the towel in. It's just the only issue is I'm in the most remote place I've ever been in my life, and just to get back to civilization, it's a seven-day walk. Let's go. <laughs> I'll see you when I'm up there. I won't be able to vlog. I can't, I can hardly breathe. We're at four and a half thousand meters, which is like, it's, it's nearly 50, it's like, I don't know, nearly 15,000 feet. Why can't we go on the three day trek? Everyone said it was lovely. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Feeling like a challenge. I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> the altitude does make me feel a bit dizzy. Which isn't a good thing, that's like a sign of altitude sickness. And we're going up a thousand meters today. The only reason why I'm doing it is because we're also going down another 500 meters after that, right? I can't breathe. <coughs> so we're going up to 5,400 meters to the Throngla Pass and then down to 3,800 meters. So a lot of up and down today. We're going to be higher than we've ever been before in our lives. And I'll tell you one thing, we've got to watch out for predators around here. See those cows there? One, two, three, four, there's four. There's five yesterday. One got eaten by a leopard, a snow leopard. So you've got to watch out. Apparently, I'll never see one because they're kind of scared of humans and they can be 10 foot away from you and they blend into the rocks. Quite frankly, I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't mind being killed by a snow leopard right now. I wouldn't have to do this. I mean, I think it's quite an honourable death. Better than a heart attack on the toilet. Think about having a heart attack on this freaking mountain. Hey, but look at that. It's a pretty cool view though. Everything's so big that the GoPro doesn't even show it. I think that might be the top. Or at least the top for a little while. I'm genuinely, uh, I was struggling walking up that. You can't even see the bottom, it's that steep. One of the hardest physical things I've ever done, I think. That really got me. Did the worst of it. I can feel that 
my um, brain isn't working so well because of the oxygen. Um, we're going to just go back up there, up to the horizon. The reason why I've got this funny hat on my head is because although it's quite hot when you're walking up, your eardrums aren't producing any heat, so they get bloody cold. We've got an earache. My lungs feel like they're full of ice. My throat's sore from the cold air as well. We're just going to get up the top of there, and at some point soon, We'll be at the highest point. We'll have a little party and a cup of tea. Little tea party. You're all welcome, you're all invited. Just keep watching. Damn, I'm so tired. I don't even feel like myself. Oh, I'm not enjoying this, I can tell you that. Can't wait to get to the wrong pass, the highest point of the trek. We've got another 500 meters to go. Apparently it takes two to three hours. We just did 500 meters in an hour. Absolutely killed us. But check this out. Up in the Himalayas, they have some really cool flowers. Look at this. This is a poppy. It's a relative of the poppy anyway. It's the most unique family member of the poppy family I've ever seen. It's super spiky. These are the seed pods. So this is where you would scratch it to try and produce opium. I, I, I don't think that you can do that with these ones. But the plants, the, the leaves, have purpley red dots with spikes coming out of them. I've never seen a spiky poppy like that. And the blue is gorgeous. Just a little Himalayan poppy. How cool is that? There's loads of little flowers. I mean, there were more down there, but you've got all these little, like, almost cacti plants that are flowering. You've got these little things here. You've got loads of flowers, loads of little flowers. They're very small up here because of the frost and the cold, the oxygen. Uh, uh. Look at these mental little things. It's like a cactus with like a spider's web over it. It's so strange. I came from over there. Oh, yeah. There's glaciers all up here, everywhere. There's one there, one there, another one, another one, another one over there and over there. It's quite cold up here actually, it's a lot colder than I thought it would be. It's a bit hard to know what to wear. Look at these beautiful flowers here man. They're everywhere, all different types of mosses. Just different Himalayan grasses and things. Little micro flowers everywhere, all different colours and types. We just heard something that sounded like thunder. But we think it must have been a huge, or I think it must have been a big landslide or an ice slide. Came from up there where the ice, the ice is, the uh, glaciers. Just goes to show it's another example of how dangerous the season is up in the mountains. Got some blue sky up there. Oh, can you hear that? It's very faint and in the background. But it's big cracking noises. I don't think it's thunder. What do you reckon it is, babe? It sounds a lot like thunder. It does sound like thunder. Okay, it's definitely thunder. And we just had a huge crack of thunder. It's not very far away either. And we're a bit worried because we're the highest conductor around. Bit thundery. Oh, so out of breath. Just 
just can't breathe up here very well. We've gone up nearly 2,000 meters in, in about 26 hours, which isn't recommended, but we'll see. But feeling the effects of the lack of oxygen. There's deer, mountain deer. Oh my God. Oh my God. Stay quiet. Oh. Thunder is very scary when you are very high and there's not many conductors. We're like one of the very little conductors that's up here. Right now it's hailing it down. Ow! Hit me in the face. Got a nice view of a mountain up there. These are yaks. Oh, better move out of the way. Look at that. I've never seen a yak before. Their like bellies and chests are all shaggy and hairy. So we are around just over one kilometre from the top. We need to ascend another 200 metres. And breathing is getting really hard now. In fact, Craig can't vlog because he needs to catch his breath. Um, the thunder's kind of passed. I'm never doing this ever again. <laughs> this isn't fun. It's snowing, it's hailing, it's freaking raining. It's snowing, visibility's not great. Uh, that's kind of cool up there. Uh, we're gonna get to the top and then get the hell down. Damn you, Molly. <laughs> wow, there it is, Fongla Pass. This has been intense, Craig's not feeling good. It's been rainy, hailing, thunder, snow, now blue skies. Pretty insane views. Can't see anything over there at all. Never done anything this challenging in our lives. Honestly, there were points just now where we thought we weren't going to actually make it. Craig really wasn't feeling great. He's still not. We need to get down now so that he can get some more oxygen. Here it is. This is from our pass. 5,400 and something metres. Craig's all the way down there already. He's basically running for the oxygen. Um, glad we made it. I don't think if it was 10 more meters up, he wouldn't have made it. But we've done it. Now it's just down. Should be nice and easy. Hopefully he'll be able to tell you all about it when he's feeling a bit better. So I've started feeling altitude sickness about 500 meters from the top. The reason why I carried on is because once you hit the top, we then go down really fast in elevation. If we just quit and went the other way, we wouldn't have gone down very fast. It's so steep. So probably took the same amount of time to get up and to start descending then to descend and get down 500 meters and then when it's the same you might as well complete the task 
Well then, how are you feeling? The altitude sickness has gotten worse since I've been at the top. Finding it hard to breathe going down, downhill and very dizzy. I feel like I'm going to faint. Coordination of the legs aren't good and vision is very weird. Like, my eyes can see but then like my brain isn't processing it I don't understand how to tell you what it is but busy trying to feel better to realize what just happened and when he goes through this footage and realizes that I left the GoPro up there uh oh they're gonna be trouble but there he is you see him tiny little dot down there he's doing quite well I'm thinking he's gonna be all right um, the worst of it's over and we're going down a lot lower than where we stayed last night and even the night before actually so we're at an altitude or we'll be sleeping at an altitude that our bodies are quite used to so hopefully he'll be all right and the symptoms will kind of dissipate but we'll let you know we've got like a seven kilometer walk to the town where we're gonna stay but it's all downhill so hopefully it shouldn't be too hard anyway my arms aching holding this camera speak to you in a bit this is a barren wasteland there's no edible plants up here humans shouldn't be up here this is the <laughs> land of the gods what you have sunglasses <laughs> what He's, uh, he's missing an arm on his sunglasses. We go around here so I can see better. As I was saying, this land is not for humans. This is sacred land of the gods. There's no edible plants up here. There's no way anyone should be up here. There's nothing here for anyone. I shan't be coming up to this, this height again. This is... This is, this is the land of the gods, look, there's nothing here for us. It's ice and rock, just waiting for death. That's what I've been doing up here anyway. Well, personally, I think it's pretty stunning. Oh, you bloody bugger. <laughs> Craig's really been struggling, even just going downhill. He's having to take a lot of breaks and get his breath back. He's had weird, like, tingly feelings and sure I'll tell you all about it but um we've seen oh you can't even see it on the GoPro there looks like there's a settlement we're hoping that's where we're going tonight because um, we're both ready to lay down and feel a bit better how are you doing feeling a bit better uh, walking down hills isn't making me ridiculously out of breath uh, vision's much better. I'm not lightheaded so much anymore, but I feel sick. 
So, uh, just taking a little pit stop, aren't we, Craig? Yeah. Um, he needs to catch his breath. He's been having some chest pains and some electric shock situations, which uh, I don't think you're meant to be feeling. But, you know, we're going down, so it's not going to get worse. You just can't breathe. Even going downhill. I think his body's just in like overdrive, kind of like shock sort of st thing. Just didn't acclimatise. Yeah. So uh, yesterday Craig was quite keen to do two days walking in one day, um, which I was a bit unsure about because it was increased elevation which wasn't recommended and uh, we did it we felt fine yesterday after doing that but then well yesterday felt dizzy when I got to the... yeah but then we felt fine for the rest of the evening didn't we I thought that uh, it's because I didn't eat enough sugar or something or enough food but I felt quite dizzy for a few hours last night I just thought it was food. No, you didn't really mention that. I did, but not much. So then, we had the choice this morning of setting off to do this mental bit we've done today, or to rest. But it was so cold there that we didn't want to stay another night. Well, they expect me to upload all the time. Oh yeah, he needs to get back to get So I had to get back in time. If I left it another day, people will start complaining. And I just feel like... I I owe it to the subscribers. I think I made a big mistake. The good thing is we're now going down to 3,800 meters, which is quite a long way down. And the best way to manage altitude sickness is to get down. So, like Craig said earlier, it's better that we came down this side than went back down the other side, where we'd still be at quite high elevation. Um, we've got some altitude sickness tablets, so. He's gonna have one of them. This makes me look like such a pussy. Have some water. No, it's not the bad thing. It's the oxygen. It's just the oxygen, I can't. And when your body doesn't get oxygen, I can't then breathe. it can't function properly. Yeah. But it's not a bad place to be sat for a minute. This is where we are. Luckily, the sun's warming my body up. Yeah, because it was super cold as well when we were on our way up. It's almost like a different climate on this side of the pass. On the other side, it was snowy, it was hailing, it was really cold, our fingers went numb. Craig was only wearing flipping shorts, so his legs must have frozen. It's my face and my hands and my arm. I can't feel my hands. No, I can't feel my fingertips. But when we looked hard, it said you can use a t-shirt. Yeah, actually, we when we bought some of our trekking equipment from one of the trekking shops, we went in in shorts and t-shirt, like what you wear in Polka and Kathmandu where it's hot. And the guy said to us, "Oh yeah, you can just wear that." You can't see on my nose, can you? <laughs> no, you've got the hat over your nose. So uh, we were under the impression that. The warm clothes we bought would be unnecessary, but bloody hell, I'm glad we did bring them because they're they're really not enough. I need my poncho. So we're gonna get his poncho out, get him warm, and get some water down him. Another altitude sickness tablet, I think. No, you can't. I just need, need some water. I'm feeling like it's not getting worse now. Yeah. We All had right. to we had to get down from that pass. We couldn't have stopped there and let him acclimatise. We had to get down, but. Caught his breath back a bit now. We'll update you soon. So I survived. I wasn't able to finish the vlog, so this is what we're doing now. We're going to give you an update and a couple of tips on how to negate this situation of altitude sickness. So we ended up running down a thousand five hundred meters from the top. I was having terrible pins and needles in my feet, arms, hands. It was actually felt like I was getting an electric shock. Like if I moved my hand or my arm a certain way, I was getting like these electric shocks that like you touch an electric fence. It was terrible. I could see my eyesight hadn't gone, 
but my brain wasn't processing what I was seeing. Everything was really, really bright, and that's why I had to cover my eyes and everything. I was getting a headache, and I was feeling really sick. Now, we went down 1,500 meters to go sleep, which is why we kept going, because I started getting kind of quite ill, sort of about 200 meters from the top, and we would have only gone down a short distance and then had to stay at quite a high altitude, which is why we carried on going. I don't know if it was the right decision or not, but it meant that we went down a lot further on that day. The further I went down, I was feeling less, my nervous system and my blood circulation, uh, the tingling, it was getting less, but I was getting sicker and sicker in terms of feeling like I was gonna vomit. I lost, loads of energy. We got to the hotel and I was just being sick for uh, what all night? 24 hours. 24 hours, just being sick constantly. It was terrible. Really bad pins and needles, numb. I was numb in places, my extremities. Um, absolutely terrible. It was a big mistake um, not being prepared enough physically for the for the trek. When we looked it up, it said be if beginners can do it as long as they're relatively healthy. I don't think that was a beginner's trek. When we got to that hotel, we spoke to a couple of people that did the trek, uh, did the same trek as us. They got ill as well, but they went up much slower than us. Mm. So, you know, it's really easy to get ill. Loads of people told me that they had got ill there. Also, Molly was nowhere near as ill as me. When we looked it up, men get far iller or more likely to get ill from altitude sickness and get iller. No one really knows why. I think it's because there's a, I have more muscle mass than Molly being, being male. Um, I typically have, well, I definitely have more muscle mass than Molly. Um, my circulatory system is bigger, so it needs more oxygen. So I think that's probably something to do with it. Anyway, tips on how to negate this, what would you say? Um, I mean, go slower than we did for sure. Yeah. Take your time. If you start to feel anything unusual, then stop where you are and rest and acclimatize. Even if it's just like a little funny feeling like of slight dizziness or whatever. Because that's what I felt yeah. and I thought it was a lack of sugar. Because I've never experienced this. I live on the coast in Cornwall. It's the lowest point that you could be. It's at sea level. My body is not acclimatized in any way. Um, so yeah, I would certainly say don't go any more than 800 meters per day. I think it's recommended. No 500. More than five. Yeah. yeah, but we we were okay. We've d we did we did a few thousand. We did a thousand meter the day before, but because it wasn't high as high, it was fine. We ended up doing 2,000 meters in about 26, 28 hours, something like this, which is really stupid. Um, I don't really know what else to say, to be honest with you. Uh, really, really stupid. Um, we messed up. Thank you to Molly for looking after me. They're all going to take the absolute piss out of me because they always say that you're, you're the strong one. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, he doesn't do well with illness, do you? No. If anyone's going to get ill, it will be great. And what happened is because I have a chronic um, condition, it set the puking, flared my condition off, and I got really ill from not just the altitude sickness, I got well from that, but then um, my chronic digestive disorder flared up and I got very, very ill. I was in a lot of pain, but that's something separate. Um, but yeah, how was the trek? It was wonderful. I mean, of course, the illness wasn't wonderful, but the rest of it was one of the best experiences we've had, right? Yeah. When Definitely I... the most beautiful walk we've ever been on. And the most beautiful mountainous um, regions that we've ever seen. We've seen a lot of mountainous regions in Asia. It's beautiful. I highly recommend the trek, but you must... We've never been trekking before. I'm not a walker. I don't exercise, all right? It was bloody stupid for me to do this. I just didn't know. I was ignorant to it. Um, Nepal is the most beautiful but most dangerous environment that I've ever travelled in, for sure. It is very dangerous. But only because of the nature, nothing to do with the people. Oh, the people, the yeah. You know. The people are the safest people yeah. out of Asia. Yeah. Out of anywhere I've ever been, the Nepali people are the most, so far, are the most... Like, Lao, everyone, all of them, they're lovely, but so far, the most welcoming, welcoming people 
as the Nepali people. It's been a been a really beautiful trip in this country. The trek was magical. I won't ever do that one again. I'm never going to five and a half thousand meters again. It didn't. It wasn't for me. It's not. It's not what I'm cut out for. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna do the trek, anyone can do it. Just bloody do a couple of walks before, you know? <laughs> we didn't do anything, you know? No, but it's it's not the walking, it's practice being at altitude if you can. Because yeah. that's that was the we can we could walk. We had no trouble for the first five, seven days because it was just walking. But when you hit altitude, if you've never trained in altitude, it's it's a serious business. It really oh, it, is. there's nothing to mess about with. We didn't realise how how dangerous it was but we thought you know you go up to Everest 8,000 feet you need oxygen and stuff like that we thought okay but we didn't realize that this beginner trek was going to be so dangerous um so adverse now yeah I don't really know what else to say to be honest with you just be prepared be prepared do a lot of research and uh talk to people that have already done it because we hadn't done that did we no so anyway, amazing trek. The Annapurna circuit is amazing. It's beautiful. It's awe-inspiring. It's emotional. I will never forget this. It's going to be a memory that I will cherish for my whole life. I will not cherish this day, though, this day of walking, that last day. I didn't enjoy it. I'm going to be honest with you. I just didn't enjoy it. But that's because I'm not prepared. I wasn't prepared. Don't be an idiot like me. Mm. prepare yourself learn from my mistake i wasn't going to upload this because i know a lot of nepali people don't like negative vlogs this is a negative vlog on the trek for the trek it's negative because i messed up i wasn't fit enough you know and that takes that kind of bashes you know the ego a bit you know it takes a lot for a, for a man to say i wasn't strong enough i wasn't fit enough but it's just the truth